Welcome to episode 132 of Dial the Gate. My name is David Reed. Thank you so much for joining in. David DeLuise is joining us for this episode. Pete Shanahan in Stargate SG-1. I appreciate it if you're tuning in live because you'll have an opportunity to submit questions to David directly. But before we get started, if you like Stargate and you want to see more content like this on YouTube, it would mean a great deal. If you click that like button, it makes a difference with YouTube's algorithm and will help the show continue to grow. Please also consider sharing this video with a Stargate friend. And if you want to get notified about future episodes, click the subscribe icon. And giving the bell icon a click will notify you the moment a new video drops and you'll get my notifications of any last minute guest changes. And clips from this live stream will be released over the course of the next few weeks on GateWorld.net and into the summer hiatus on Dial the Gate. I appreciate you tuning in. Let's bring in... David DeLuise, Mr. Pete Shanahan. What's up? You were, so, you, were, you were saying we have special guests, David DeLuise and Pete Shanahan. I'm like, who's Pete Shanahan? I said and Pete Shanahan? Or maybe as Pete Shanahan, whatever. I heard Pete Shanahan and I was like, who is this Pete Shanahan that I don't know? <laughs> I'll tell you who else is here with us is Tony Shanahan. Tony DeLuise. Aww. Say hi. Say hi to everybody. Hello, Hello, Mr. Tony. Yeah. How is nice. Tony? Tony is good. He's a mini uh, dachshund, and he's about four and a half months. And for all the live people, do we have any live people? We have today? most definitely live people today. Okay, so here, there's going to be a guess. He weighs exactly a certain amount. Anyone who guesses that, I will give them, I'll do a shout out for them. How about that? Okay. Well, um, Summer, if you, Summer, can you hear me? If you could uh, let us know. Um, All right. Well, I will. So you know what? I, for, for everybody, I'm going to show his entire butt. Like this is. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Baba so there's his whole, that's his whole body. Okay. Is this your first uh, dachshund? It's my first dog. It's your first dog ever. Yeah, I have two. I had two daughters when I was 21, one daughter when I was 21. And then I had another daughter and I was like, I'm, I, I want the entity to go to the bathroom by <laughs> itself at some point. What are you doing? I, you we, have, we have one pound. Uh, we have five pounds. We have 14 pounds. We have three uh, pounds. Okay. So, so far, no one's guessed it right. Someone okay. One um, pound. Someone doesn't know dogs <laughs> or know our no. imperial system. Six point two pounds. No, no, no. It's a whole. It's a whole, guys. It's a whole. Getting closer. <laughs> Getting closer. Um, <laughs> how do we do this? Do we wait? We, we a bit more point. answers coming in. My question for you, David, is: Do you feed him Beneful? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> I feed him whatever. Whatever this brand is that we found, like the, the, you know, it's a good brand. But this is, by the way, this is my wand as Jerry Russo. Jerry Russo. I do. You know what I do? I do um, cameos. Yes. Right. And and uh, when I do cameos, I I do spells and stuff because I'm a wizard. I don't know if you're a wizard. The Waverly. Yes. Yeah. Correct. I'm a. Um, uh, uh, a stalker, a cop, as Pete Shanahan, and then stalker, and wizards, gosh. and a dad, and a wizard. <laughs> um, so, and Tony wants to eat my wand. Um, Summer, so has anyone wand. else? Oh, yes. <laughs> I just didn't want to interrupt. So we okay. have five, four, eight, seven, three. Okay, okay. Eight. <laughs> and a, and a bell. We, I, and and we need a more specific eight. Oh, I thought it eight. was a whole number. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, sorry. So eight. So far, eight wins. Who, so who far, said eight, eight wins. summer? Um, that would be. Let me make sure I have the first one to get it. It looks like it's going to be Amanda Gibson. Okay. So can I? How about this? Take Amanda's uh, information. Okay. And and um, Amanda, congratulations. And by the way, Tony is 8.4 pounds. 8.4 so, pounds. I'm ah. married to the German, so I have to be very specific. Um, <laughs> and the, the, I would say if you can um, 
get her email or, or her information. Yeah, she's willing to share it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And just, just however you want a contact, yeah. however, and then um, I, uh, something specific, like what okay. she wants me to say, something to say, and then I'll, I'll, I'll send that to you guys and then you okay. can send it to her. Sweet. Okay. Appreciate it, David. So All right. you've been keeping busy with Pupper. So what is it like to have your first dog? I'm curious. I've owned uh, three dogs. He just and they took were my wand. Insane. He just took my wand and he's yeah. eating my wand. I'm not gonna be able to do magic anymore. I love I love having uh I love having it. It's great. Yeah. You know, the one thing am I allowed to say bad words? Yeah, within maybe yeah. Okay, so the good news about your puppy. The difference between a puppy and your kids is the puppy's never going to look at you and go, go fuck yourself, dad. This is true. They will not do that. So, so anybody who was offended by that probably doesn't have kids. Um, so yeah, I love having a, a puppy. He's great. It's, it's just been a little uh, trying because my wife is in Germany right now and I've been a solo dad uh dog dad for for three weeks but wow he's great wow. he now i can't really move the camera but he sits he stays he leaves it um and he goes down but for he's got two inch his right. legs are two they're inches. not tall but when he sits he goes like this and then when he goes down he goes like this <laughs> just, it's just that i have to get the one so no, it's all right my problem with dachshunds is my, my problem with dachshunds is that you can't like you, you can't if you take them out in the rain, their entire yeah. underside is soaked. Like you have yeah, to you also, have to have a towel at the door. He doesn't like to go to the bathroom in the rain. Like, no, that's and that's not that's pretty normal. Oh, really? Yeah. It is for, for dogs? Yeah. So not, not a lot of them are crazy about the rain. A lot of them are crazy about jumping in the water, but not so much about the rain. So at least in the dog, the dogs that I have raised, they're like, you want me to go out there and do my business? You got nothing coming. It's not <laughs> happening. So wait a minute, the dogs you raised, they speak English? No, no. But I intuit based on the looks that they give me when I tell them to go out, they're looking at me right, like, right. uh-uh. So standard poodle, German shepherd and dachshunds. So so funny so all right i'm to, to answer your question yes. i'm enjoying being a, a dog dad it's fun <laughs> okay so what is um are there any uh, uh projects on the horizon that we need to yes i did i did quite at the top few, of the show yes i did quite a few um okay. uh, well i mean like you know like some guest spots stuff, okay you know? like i did an episode of uh 911 um which is on fox and I okay. did an episode of The Rookie. Um, I did an episode of Toast for Grace's show called um, Home Economics, which was really fun. Okay. And um, I, I did, oh, uh, uh, This Is Us. I just did an episode of that. My parents are hooked on this show. They cannot wait for the end of it. And this is the last season. Yes, and I'm I'm in one of those episodes, which is so fun. Uh, I love the show. Um, it's it's tough though, because yes, it's it almost like you got to be a glutton for punishment. You know, yes, like it is. you you um, you know you're gonna cry your eyes out, and just yep. that's that's what happens. You know, um, but it was really fun. I had a great time and. I love it. You're like, have any work? And I'm like, yes, I've been, I've been working. I've, I'm telling you, I've been working. I swear. Um, but it's, it's interesting because, you know, I mean, nowadays it's a little different. My, my, um, you know, I'm not really like, I don't know how to say this, to, but I'm not series regular material anymore. Like that could happen, but it probably won't. Um, but I do like guest spots and stuff, and I enjoy that, you know. Are you not uh, um, going out for pilots anymore? No. I, 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 listen, I'll do a pilot. I'll go yeah. out on them. It's just the desire, the, the, the demand for me right now um, is, is not as, as great as it used to be. And, I, and I'm okay with that. You know, I think acceptance is the answer, right? So I accept what's happening, which is I can, I, David, you're like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
<laughs> well, the, I, like in in Alcoholics Anonymous, which I was in for 22 years. Wow. There's a there's a part of it that says acceptance is the answer to all my problems today. So it's raining. Oh no! Well, if I accept the fact that it's raining, you know, uh, I, um, unlike the dogs, I guess. Well, yeah, the dog. But I mean, I guess the context that you possess is is one that I don't. Whereas you know the highs and lows in terms of the demographics of Hollywood and and when someone is at their peak and when they are not. And I don't know that. So I'm think I'm looking at you and I, what I see is a great actor and a talented human being. And there's always, you know, great work coming out that that can use a great actor and a talented human being. But I guess what you're looking the lens that you're looking through is the demographic that you fit into in the business. Is, is that what you're saying? Exactly. And okay. the demand. The demand is uh, the pool is saturated and the demand is low. Okay. Is that the right thing? The pool I, is full. Yeah. The pool is full. Um, <laughs> I suppose that's true. So I have adapted okay. and I do, I produced, a, and I think I told you this last time we talked, I produced a scripted podcast. Yes. Which is everything you hear, but you don't see it, right? So it's like War of the Worlds. It's uh, called Grandma for President. It's on Audible if anybody wants to listen to it. It's um, 10 episodes. We got Mel Brooks to do a part. It's about a 10 year old boy who writes a paper on who he would vote for for president, um, Ronald Crump or Ernie Blanders. And he's like, I don't know about them. I'm going to say maybe grandma should be president. His paper goes viral and then she becomes a viable candidate. And I got to work on it with my wife and my writing partner, Melissa Clark and segue into we have four other ideas. We just had a pitch meeting to Nickelodeon the other day, um, and, and it went well. They're just starting out in the podcast world. Wow. So they're focused on uh, a name recognition, which is SpongeBob and Avatar. So we're like, OK, well, we're not in that category. <laughs> but Grandma we, for president. You know, Check this out. I just pulled, put it up on the website. Ten episodes, ah, okay, 62 cool. ratings, all five stars. And it's it's on Apple or something. It's on Audible. Too. David Deloise, Mel Brooks, Suzanne Bla uh, Blakesley, Tucker mm -hmm. Chandler, and Danielle Nicolette, who played Reese in um, uh, Stargate SG One. And, right. and I've been she's trying also to get her on. on. The Flash now. She's on the Flash now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No wonder How she passed I... on my show. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm brutally honest. Funny. So, <laughs> yeah, that's great. This is really cool, man. Ryland okay, Productions. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go into uh, what my T says right now on my T bags. There's a thing, and it says, "Let your need be to help those in need." Huh? I like that. My dad's joke. Now you ready? Oh, I thought I was taller. <laughs> right? Uh, oh God, I love you. Oh man, that's great. That is that is so funny. Tell us tell us a Dom story, please. Uh, please tell us a Dom story. So everybody has open house, right? You're going to go to open house with your with your kids, and your your parents get to uh, to come to that. And my dad used to swear a lot. So as a little kid, I was like, Dad, can you can you not say the f word to my teacher, please? You know. <laughs> so there's that story. And then we, we didn't live far from my junior high school, but my, I, we were always late. I mean, no joke. We were like four or so blocks away and we would always be late. He would always pop me in the car and he would drive onto the campus and drop me off at the uh, classroom, okay. which not, not a lot of people would do that. Right. Why not? Um, and also he was, he was, Loved my dad. He was a crazy driver. Sometimes if oh. there was traffic, he would go up on the sidewalk to go around or something. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I, I learned from him how to kind of maneuver. I've slowed down. I had a moment in my life where I had a bunch of tickets, a bunch of speeding tickets. And I was like, how do I avoid getting these tickets? And I, I was on the 101 on the freeway. Yeah. And I was like, maybe I should drive the speed limit. Hence, no more tickets. 
Isn't that something? It's amazing what happens when you obey. Yes. But the, also the, the trick is to, not necessarily in terms of speeding, but the trick is to sometimes know not when to obey, not just to take everything for granted. But that's, yeah. that's cool. No, of course, of course. But, um, you know, o- overall, I, I, I'll, I'll, if I think of another dad story, I'll tell you. But he, you know, when you, when you went to his house, you, you should always bring your appetite because you'd step in and he'd go, do you want a sandwich? You want, to, you want some food? Because that's how Italians show love. You yep, know, they, food means I love you. Yep. Exactly. And I was like, no, dad, I just ate. I'm fine. He goes, and he would go like this. It's like unhappy that I yeah. don't want a sandwich. Then he would make sandwiches and he would put them on the table. And then we would sit there and talk for a couple of hours. And then I would take a bite of a sandwich and he would go, I knew you were hungry. What was his specialty sandwich? What would he throw together? I, it's, it really, I mean, it's funny you asked that it, there wasn't anything specific, but I'll tell you this, there was a lot of like, whatever was left over from the night before would be in the sandwich. You know? <laughs> um, but you know, you're, you're like a salami and cheese and, okay. and, and that kind of thing, you know, ah, Tony. Just, still puppy teeth, still puppy teeth. I know. They're sharp as hell. I have, I have, I have marks all over yes, my body. Yes, you will. Puppy teeth. But puppy breath is also very good. So yeah, you know, it's not actually, it's not that bad. But correct. You know what's funny? The other day I was like, he's he doesn't go to the bathroom outside of the house. So I'm really forcing it. I'm like, let's go out. We went out at 10 a.m. Lunch here, walking, walking. Opportunities to pee all day. Seven o'clock at night. Still hadn't peed. Wow. Because I hadn't called, right? I wish I could hold my pee like that. So yeah, I, no way. I'm walking around. I'm walking. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not going home until he pees. And he yeah. peed, and I couldn't. It was seven forty or something, and I couldn't be more happy. Oh, I you was, let you, yeah, well, you praise, you praise, good boy, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you so, got to that positive reinforcement, man. So yeah, exactly. One of those dogs who like to hold it in. It's just, oh, come on, man. And then six in the morning, they get to you, and they go, especially my dachshunds would go. <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, you know, exactly. Just, now, oh. now, did your we we put him in a in a in our bedroom in a crate? So at like nine ish, he's to go to bed. He falls yeah. asleep, and we put him in there, cover it up. He's good till like wow thirty or so. Like clearly, okay. he can hold it. Yeah, wow, isn't that something? Yeah, so that's that's been a, a positive. So you know. He, you put him down and then I, I'll get a couple of moments to myself after nine, you know, <laughs> which is good. We were. Um, do I'm curious. Yeah. Do other people have that? Do, do other puppies like hold their pee outside of the house and then only pee when they come home? Is that something? Is that. But, a OK, so the dachshund trait that nose is very, very powerful. And they are they know that once they pee, they can go back in. But they don't want to go back in. They want to keep smelling because the whole world is smells to them and they want to smell them all. So they want to be outside for as long as they possibly can to get every whiff again because they're following that nose. They're not interested in being. Yeah, no, you're right. And when he wants to come in, he goes, okay, I'm ready. Yeah, exactly. Now he's done. By the way, that was pee. That was me peeing. (laughs) (laughs) We were uh, privileged to have uh, Peter on. Uh, uh, last year uh, for Wait, my for, brother, for your brother for a great episode. Just one of my favorite human beings. I think it's because I think, it, I think it had a lot to do with me and him watching my episode and wanting to clarify whatever, you know, <laughs> good, right? Well, I'm hoping to have him back really soon, but he's been busy as hell. And, yeah. you know, it's just, it, you, I, it's hard to think of a nicer, a nicer guy. You know, I mean, just, who's nicer, David? Well, OK, that's fair. Absolutely. Um, what, when you look at uh, his not just his body of work, but, you know, the his uh, his life as a person and as a man and as a human being, um, uh, what are the traits that you uh, admire and uh, hold yourself up to when you when you when you look at him and consider him as a person. That's so interesting. Aside from the the annoying stuff when you were a kid. 
Well, yeah, right. Because I, I imitate, I imitate. I'm sure I did the imitation of him. And uh, David, this is uh, how you do it. And you know, he when I was coming on to be Amanda's love interest. Yes. Uh, you have to act like an adult. And I'm like, Peter, I have a mortgage and two kids and a thing. And I didn't have a dog at the time or else I would have said, I have a dog too. I'm a grown up, you know? <laughs> um, so he listens to everybody and takes yeah. it in. And and I think that's one of the reasons why he's such a great director is because he's able to get the information he needs from, you know, uh, people that are coming up, the actors or the, the you know, wh whatever is happening, you know? And then he can make a quick decision and a good decision. He's a great father. He's a wonderful husband. And, you know, as a brother, he's, he's okay. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a very considerate, you know, I, I, I think there's, Peter likes to be brash and bold, you know? Um, I, I just, he's a, he's a very big personality, like all the Deloises are, you know? And and um, I, I have to say this, I just got a, Tony's biting me. He I is. just got a Samsung TV. Ah. And in Samsung, they have a 21 Jump Street channel. They do indeed, I saw it. Wow. So it's just um, them playing 21 Jump Street yep. on a loop. So I have that, like, you know, I have my apps and stuff. But I have that in the background. So every once in a while, I'll be like, oh my God, I'm about to watch a whole episode of 21 Jump Street. That's so crazy. <laughs> um, and it was, it's, it's very interesting. You know, Peter got that job when he was like 21. Yeah. He yeah. was a baby. He was a kid. Yeah. So, I mean, not a bad job to, to get when you're just out of high school, you know? Absolutely. You know, something steady and something fun and entertaining and absolutely. Yes. So I, I do enjoy my brothers. Uh, you know, when I went up there last time to, to visit, um, we all did an escape room. <laughs> you, I don't know if you've ever done that, but yes. they love escape rooms. Yep. So trying to figure out, uh, you know, how to get out of um, a, an escape room. He Some likes of them are hard. We barely made yeah. ours. We, we made it out, but it was tough. Uh, Peter is very clever and he likes to figure yeah. things out yeah if if i didn't know it i would think he was uh, a german you know <laughs> they like to they like to be precise and figure things out so i i'm gonna let you ask more questions sorry i keep talking is there a role and this is this is a question that i usually like to ask my guests but i didn't i didn't the last time that you were on that um that you took on that made you that 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 surprised you or or made you grow in a way that you didn't expect or made you examine the work in a way that you didn't expect that you would well i'm not you know i mean the first thing i was going to say when you know i was feeling like you were going to say um what what was your favorite role you know and and the, the answer to that is a, an episode of Rizzoli and Isles that I did where I played like a crazy person, which was so much fun. And um, so Pete Shanahan was one of the first times, and maybe that's why my brother Peter was like, you're a grown up. It was one of the first times where I had a real, you know, I, I think I did a lot of comic relief stuff then. I think I did a lot of like, you know, I did some serious things, um, but it was the first time that I was like a grown up in a grown up relationship. And I was like, you know, I'm like having pillow talk with Amanda, yeah. at, you know, and, and going on dates and, and having these like romantic moments. And, you know, it was, it was really sweet. And it, it, it kind of made me grow up a little bit. And you were at a crossroads as well. Yes, exactly. You're about to say what I said, which was I was about to get divorced. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, the, yeah. It's like we were talking about at one point, you know, how you know you even even Shanahan's cowboy boots, you know, made you stand yeah. up straighter. I still have those boots. I still have those boots, <laughs> and I have the jacket. The jacket doesn't really fit, but the, my feet are not fat. So, <laughs> the, um, the the interesting thing is, um, my marriage was coming to an end 
and in doing this character, I was becoming more of a man. You know what I mean? Like more of a, a kind of a, a grown up person. And you know what, what had happened in my marriage was I, I lost myself. You know, I was with someone who was not very kind. And I just was like, whatever you want, you want to go yeah. here. I lost any of my, I just went, okay, whatever you want to do. You had no agency. I, yeah, exactly. It was over. But then those boots and like, right. it was so weird. I like, I bought myself a, a Honda Civic hybrid. We're talking a long time yeah. ago when yeah. they, you had a Prius and a Honda Civic hybrid. Yeah, and that was the only choices, yeah. Yeah. right? And um, I then did that, you know, like this was the choice I wanted and uh, whatever, I don't give a shit. My, my ex was like, people are going to think we're poor because we're driving a Honda, uh, not at this. And I was like, I don't care what people think. I want, we, we need to get dash of gas efficiency. And I was like, Leonardo DiCaprio has a Prius. Why can't I have the, you know, but I was becoming, so to answer your question, the Pete Shanahan rule was a pivotal time in my life where it helped me kind of embrace my my manhood as a as a grown up, you know. Wow. So Peter saying you have to act like an adult actually was true. <laughs> I don't think that's what he meant. <laughs> I think I think you know it, when you're and I know he was, I'm sure he was kidding, you know, but it's like that was that was his show, you know. He had invested at that point three four five years of his life on that thing and yeah. you're, you're coming into that place. And I'm sure part of you was, you know, I'm, I'm sure in all seriousness, part of you was, you know what, I'm going to honor my brother with this, with this performance. Oh yeah. I mean, look, there's a lot of nepotism in my family. Sorry to interrupt you, but I, of course I wanted, you know, to, I, I'm a representation of my brother and I'm being brought in and under those guidelines. So I wanted it to be, I wanted to do the best job that I can. And with that said, any job that I do, I want it to of be. Of course. Can, you know. Absolutely. I um, have questions from the fan base. Oh, good. Um, so Tracy asked a, a favorite memory of your dad. We we got that one. She said, I recently rewatched Haunted Honeymoon. Oh, yeah. Such a great humor. I've not seen this. They're, they're redoing they're re-releasing it like there's like this cult following now of that and i did an interview for a dvd or something where there if people don't know haunted honeymoon my dad played gene wilder's aunt in the movie okay yeah okay and and sorry i i interrupted you is there no more? go ahead i okay. yeah so my dad played gene called my dad and said I want you to play my aunt. And my dad was like, yes. So he, <laughs> he this accent, you know, oh, darling, you come in here and I want to tell you what, you know, he did this thing. And he was always so proud of the fact that he made his breasts birdseed. That's what his breasts were <laughs> made out of birdseed. So um, yeah, and Gilda Radner was in it. And it was, you know, it was a- I need to see this thing. <laughs> it's, a fun, it's a fun, silly, you know, movie. So. Uh, uh, General Maximus, uh, can you um, share uh, a, a fond memory on set? What was your first day like? What was that first day of being on, with Amanda? On, um, was the kiss the first day or did that come later? <sighs> okay. I'm 50. All right, so I can't remember everything. Okay, but that's fair. That's fair. I'm sorry. I remember the apartment they put me in, going over my lines with Peter the night before, and I had, you know, I had a bunch of stuff to do. Yeah. And I was, I was ready for everything, but the 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 first day, of the first episode was directed by Will Ware, right? And um, he was super <laughs> nice and super great. I think the first thing I did was I brought her home. We were like talking in front of her house. Yeah. There was a lot of close ups. And uh, I just was like, what's my, what's going on here? I'm in love with this woman. And this is the woman that I want to spend my life with. Yeah. You know? And so I was looking at her and I was saying goodbye. And we said goodbye. Yeah. And I improv I said, have I left yet? 
And she said, no. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go now. I can't so, feel my legs. <laughs> I can't feel my legs. Right. So I, they left that in, which was so great, you know, and I, I love that they did that, but it was, it was a moment where I felt comfortable enough to do a little improv. Usually you don't do improv on, on yeah. one hours or anything. If, if you're not in that kind of a, a zone, you know what I mean? And as far as my first day, that was the big memory that I had where I was so proud of myself. And I also got to like kiss her. And, you know, that's exciting, you know? Oh, it's Amanda that's, tapping. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I don't think I need to tell that story again. About but, the mint? Yeah. <laughs> well, where, where she was like, again. You know, oh, yes. Like, we need to do that again. again. <laughs> that's right. Um, but, yeah, she is just like the nicest, sweetest. And so that was that was my, like, first memory on on set, you know? <laughs> What um, did you think of the production values on that show? Lock Watcher wanted to know. Um, yeah, amazing. You, you know, the, 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 the production, the budget of those episodes, I think was back then like a million two an episode. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, like you can make a whole movie um, with that amount of money, mm -hmm. you know? And so it was, it was pretty big. And I... Um, I don't know what episode or what it was, but I got to shoot. You know what I yes. mean? Yes. Gun. Camera, yeah. Explosion happening. And then I get shot. I mean, as an actor, when you grow up, all you want to do is be around explosions <laughs> and beautiful women and shooting guns. And I had it all in one day, you know? It's the action star. Yeah, yeah. right? Clint Eastwood. Uh, so I, I don't remember exactly what the question was but it, oh, the, production. the production value was insane for the show they had, it was it was yeah. huge it was really huge you know um and yeah just everybody was so nice and i mean like like when you're an actor and you're going somewhere else to work it's nice that everybody you know we, we were in canada it was mm -hmm. like my brother's area home away from home i got to mm -hmm. stay and you know like have a, a it was listen when you're an actor, work is vacation. Life is work. Yeah. Trying to raise your kids, trying yeah. to get a job, trying to maneuver life. That's hard. I mean, when I was doing uh, uh, Wizards, yeah, I would go to like break. Like when I got home, I was like, dad, give me this, do this. I got to drive there. I got to go there and do this and do that and soccer and, and, and like making food. And, you know, it makes you go like this. And then when you go to set, when you go to work, people are like, Mr. DeLuise, can I bring you a Diet Coke? Would you like anything? We would love to have you on set, Mr. DeLuise, when you have a moment, you know? Like, like that yeah. is work. Like getting a job, you're like, oh, thank God I get some time to myself from working. You know? <laughs> oh, man. So That's, to have a, you know, I can't imagine what it would be like to maintain those hours, you know, of, I mean. A how, one hour, you mean? Uh, well, the, the, for do, for doing a one hour show, I, I remember talking with a friend of mine about, you know, going to these uh, events uh, where uh, the, the series regulars would get together and they would have, you know, the half hour shows and the one hour shows would all be in the same place. And, the, and those who were working on, I'm not sure what kind of events these were, publicity events maybe like comic-con and the people who ran who were a part of half hour programming uh were just bright and fun and you know everything and the people who were in one hour shows were so exhausted <laughs> because they they would, it would take that much out of you week to week yeah, in production you're working 16 17 hour days now a sitcom now could be a you know a single camera you know like like uh, right. um Malcolm in the middle or right. that kind of thing. Yeah, it or, really did or, that. Or, went that direction. You're, you're shooting with one camera, but nowadays it's two or three even. Right. Um, you're doing coverage at the same time. Not like a traditional sitcom like Friends, where you have four cameras. You have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, rehearsing, putting in all his feet, doing like learning your lines and stuff. 
And then Thursday you do like some pre-shoot stuff. And then Friday you do like a play, you do your- With the audience. Yeah, with the audience. And oh my God, it's David. Hey Hi. buddy. Hi. So um, that's easy. Yeah. You can have a life. Like I yeah. used to be able to leave work and actually, oh, I would bring my kids to school. I, I said, please, can I not come in? earlier than 8 30 because then i can actually bring my kids to school and be here so like if they started at eight they would start with a scene without me you right. know um and then typically if i couldn't get to my kids to pick them up i had someone pick them up and then bring them to me uh, uh at at my work because my my dressing room is like a hangout and right i usually wasn't done too late so you can have a semblance of a life when you're doing a, a sitcom when you're doing a one hour you're there you know, Monday, you start at 6 a.m., you're done 12 hours later or more, and then their call time gets pushed and pushed and pushed. Um, so on Friday, your call time could be one in the afternoon, and you're working till two in the morning. So oh, yeah, where do you get to see your family? You know, you don't. Yeah, not really. Well, coming and going, basically, out the yeah. door. So exactly. kiss and that's it. So said Tony. Yeah, he's he's uh, relaxing. Yes, I'm he is. Um, we didn't really speak last time about the the fan reaction. Uh, whoops! At the time when the episode uh, was in uh, production, I don't think you were aware. Were you made aware of the Sam Jack ship audience at that point, or was that only after the episode had aired? Are you talking about shippers or non-shippers? Shippers that and they, non-shippers, no, yeah. I didn't know until I did my first convention. The convention? Michael and Peter, we went to somewhere in Germany and we went to somewhere in, in uh, we went to Paris and did a convention there. Um, and just side note, in Paris, they don't say French kiss. I was like, what do you guys say for French kiss? And they're like, however you say it in in french but it means rolling the shovels so i was like i in french rolled my shovel with amanda you know um but that was the first time there i was like why are they they're like people are not happy with me and i was like what's going on and someone was like we wanted amanda you know not to be with you we're not you know we don't like stalker pete and i was like you've named me stalker pete what did i do and then i was of course justifying myself i was like if you really cared about you know her character you'd want her to be happy and fulfilled in her life i'm there fulfilling her and making her happy so yeah no i did not know that the 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 fans some of them uh did not uh they did not fancy me my character. There is a, a huge number of people who, in watching that show, and I was in the middle of that on, on Gate World in the forums in particular, who were like, Sam and Jack, get married, please. Sam and Jack, please get married. And it's like, he is her commanding officer. It's not happening. You Which know? is a beautiful scenario set up for a television show. Well, and but and on top of it, it makes for great TV because there's the tension running beneath the surface. Of course, they love one another, but they can never, you know, they can't consummate that they it's, can't it's, it's against regulation it's Sam, so right exactly the that's why i loved uh shanahan coming in because it gave her another life outside of sgc which she had never really had before in season five there's one episode where she's stalked by an alien and we we discover how hollow her her existence is away from work she's dedicated so much of her life to work and the people who are in this the orbit of that work which is fine but when she goes away she's you know she's missing who she is and I you provided cool. a little bit of that story yes yeah i um you know i, I was saying that the sam and diane on cheers sam and diane weren't together there was tension right. sexual tension forever you know with them um so I, I listen, I was happy to, I think what I did was a little bit of my character kind of like was like, go to the bathroom or get off the pot. Like, are yeah. you guys going to be together or not? I kind yeah. of exacerbated that. So um, 
even to the shippers, you're welcome. <laughs> I think you made it work. I think it was a good little arc for the character. So yeah, I think so too. Um, let me see here. I appreciate your patience. Teresa MC, would you like to see not only your brothers, but non-acting family members as extras in a future Stargate episode? I think that would be interesting if the show comes back. Um, is there the possibility of that? Or it's just yeah. always been So MGM, uh, the, the sale to Amazon is complete. Um, and I am expecting an announcement of a new Stargate something or other. This is just me. This is not insider information or anything. I'm expecting something probably in a year or so we, we should hear. So I'm not expecting it to come fast, but like a, like a, a, a spinoff or a, it's going to be um, interesting to see what happens next because they've uh, several of the MGM folks have 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 now departed or are departing. Uh, and does that the, mean they left or they died? No, they they I think that I think that they resigned. Wow. Uh, there was a big announcement recently about about two of them in particular. Uh, let me get their names here. And they were pretty they were pretty key. And some of us were kind of surprised that they uh, uh, the, one of them departed when uh, they did. We were kind of expecting it to happen a little bit uh, a little bit later here. Uh, two MGM executives announced their departures. Let me see here. Yeah, this is Michael DeLuca and Pamela Abdi brought on to ready MGM for a sale, announced their departures one month after its acquisition by Amazon. We were we were kind of surprised that Michael DeLuca departed when he did. We were expecting that to last a little longer in terms of the, the folks that I um, uh, communicate with. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens next because it could be anything. They could do a complete reboot. They could do they could go off in a new direction. Um, they may what continue with Brad's mythology. What would you do? Oh, I totally continue with Brad's mythology. Are you kidding? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just curious. Absolutely. But I have to recognize that there's a lot of baggage there in terms of story that you would have to fit a new story into. And they may look at that and say, no, you know, we want to create something fresh with the gate. I'll still watch it, but I'll be really disappointed. <laughs> So, because you have this rich mythology in place that's been built on 17 seasons and two DVD movies through the feature film and everything else. And I think that that deserves to be honored. Yes. That's just me. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me see here. D David Browning. David, do you remember your dad filming the Cannonball Run? What's this? Yes, I do. I just actually recently saw some pictures of me with... Like, with uh, Roger Moore and, and Farrah Fawcett, like holding me when I was a little kid. Was, <laughs> oh, wow. We're all, we're, you know, it's all downhill from there, right? <laughs> After Farrah um, Fawcett, yeah. Yeah, I remember very specifically the day that there was um, the, the, there's a big bottleneck and they all have to stop and they stop at like this biker bar. In two minutes, remind me, I'm gonna take him upstairs, leave him there to go to the bathroom. Two minutes, you tell me. So okay. it's where um, Jackie Chan, you know, Jackie Chan was in the, like one of the first movies he ever did in, in the States. And um, I just remember the um, being there and the, the Hell's Angels people, I was like, are those real? I was young, you know, yeah. I mean, I was whatever, like seven or eight or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Out. And I just thought it was so I was like, is this a real I think Peter Peter Fonda was one of the Hell's Angels or something. There were so many famous people in that movie. So yes, I do remember being there and on set. And Peter is at the very end of the movie where they're all running. My dad is running, he's got the ticket to punch in as as Captain Chaos. And there's a whole crowd there at the end. And then my dad, like someone says, someone save my 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 baby. And my dad goes and as the superhero goes and saves the dog and then they lose. And then Bert gets all mad, but then there's a whole group of people. And Peter at whatever he was, 14, 15, is in the crowd and, and is like, yay, you know? So there's there's Peter being an extra in the back of the- I'm gonna band. have to check this out. Yeah, it's, it's you have to almost, it's like, and the helicopter shot is happening, freeze frame, there's Peter. <laughs> okay. He looks, he looks just like his son Jake, who who uh, just did a play. Oh, 
uh, with a French accent. I, I don't know the name of the play, but I, I saw a snippet of it and he did such a great job, but I just see my brother in his son so much. Now I can't move the camera because I've been told, but I am gonna do- You can pull it up. Well, did everybody, oh, he was resting so cute. All right, stand by. Okay. That. Oh, it's a puppy. <laughs> it's a puppy. And it's been two minutes. Okay. Now, but now he's resting. Next time he gets down, I'm going to bring him up to the, to okay, the. Okay, sounds room. good. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really fun. I remember also being on the set of History of the World. Um, Dad was doing Cannonball Run 2 and History of the World at the same time. He was going back and forth. Um, and one, he had a beard and one, he didn't have a beard. So he had to put a fake beard on, you know, which is really funny. <laughs> so funny. His role in Ergo was so extraordinary. You go back, I go back and I watch that episode all the time. And I remember uh, when it came out, there was like, there was a small portion of the audience who was like, I don't get it. And, but the rest of us were like, that was great. It was absolutely insane. Because his character was, was out, so out different. Of- it was such a departure from the show. The show had, this is season three. This is before Window of Opportunity. The show had never, da- had never like, like turned the comedy up to 11. Uh, and, but his, his performance was so sincere. Like, he's this new life form that just wants to experience the universe and eat pie. Yeah. Um, what did you think about- uh, I loved it. He was like a little kid. Like my, my, I, I love that we, you know, the dad got to work with Peter, yeah. that Peter directed him, that, you know, that, that he got to experience that. I mean, as a, as a father, you want to experience what's going on with your kids. You want to be a part of that. So he got to be a part of this phenomenon, you know? And I, my favorite part of that is dad goes, do you not like this? Is it better like this? And then Peter pops in. <laughs> exactly. For a second, you know. <laughs> Can you, you resist told me this? this? I don't know. Did you did you question um my did you question my brother? Everybody stand by. Okay. Hi, I love you. The painting is amazing. Period. I'm still doing the interview. Period. Sending you a big hug and a kiss. Love you. That's how I communicate with my wife. There you go. Um, <laughs> did you test Peter and see how, did he, re, did he know how many cameos he did on the show? I don't think he was like a military guy. Or he, yeah. He's like all around, right? The number is out there. I have to look it up, but someone has, has organized all of them because it's not, it's not just like performances that he appears on screen. It's photographs. It's, I think oh. it's uh, Loki. He, he's the voice of one of the Asgard in an episode yeah. called Fragile Balance. Uh, and so it's always like, it's, it's kind of, instead of where's Waldo, it's where's Peter. Yeah, you know? that's good. <laughs> it really is. So I think we've had this question before burned back house. Did you know, Julia knows about wizardry as well. She did the voice of the wizard of Oz and BB Blocksburg characters over in Germany. Wait, hold on. Hi, Julia. There's your son. And here's David. Can you repeat the question? Julia, uh, a fan wanted to know, um, so this says, did you know Julia knows about wizardry as well? She she did voice work for Wizard of Oz and B.B. Blocksburg characters over in Germany. Did she charm you because of that knowledge? Oh, did you? Did you charm me because of that question? Please give us an answer. Um, so... I did not know that. I know okay. that she's been in a lot of, of uh, things. I mean, when, when you do voiceover stuff yeah. in Germany, it's everything. You know, we, we hear like, oh, we'll do uh, a voice here or there or something. And like, right. like I did Megas XLR on, on uh, Cartoon Network a long time ago. And you can look that up later. I, it's, I it's will. Fun. Um, and in in Germany, like you'll do several different oh. people's voices. Like she did a voice on Grey's Anatomy. She okay. did a voice here, there. I mean, the guy who does my voice does hundreds of other people's voices. It's a so very it's an assembly line. 
Yeah, and it's yeah. it's interesting. She did the voice of Hello Kitty. She did the voice of uh, one of the ponies and My Little Pony. Wow. And uh, it, hold on. I okay. Show Stand by. He's reaching. Uh, Does he have it? Yes, I do. Oh, Nicholas and the Nick little Cage. pony. Okay. Yes, and Yulia did Fluttershy, the the one of those ponies, right? Oh my gosh. Um, and Fluttershy. So I did not know this, but I, I want to say I know the BB something. I I know the the name of the thing that the the fan was saying. Um, we'll see, we'll see what she says. She, what but, she has to say. Gregory um, won. Here's the, but here's the, oh, here's the here's the here's the answer. Yeah. I didn't need um, to know that she worked in a magical way because she is magical. And Aww. I'm very happy to be married to the only person I've ever been in a healthy relationship with. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Gregory one, David, does this date bring back a certain memory? September 18th, 1994. Shit, 94, how old am I? I'm September 11. Eight. September 18th, 1994. I'm 50. How the hell am I supposed to remember? I don't know. Yeah, I, oh, I would have figured it was like the date of a, a birth or something. September. Well, my kids. Gregory are 1, please explain. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I want to know. Yeah, exactly. So, so well, I was born in 71. So, how old was I? Okay, so uh, twenty three. I was twenty three. I I had a one year old. Could okay. be could be uh, Third Rock from the Sun premiering. Okay, is it a work related? I need a hint. Yeah, Gregory let's, one. Let's let's get. Come one. on, Gregory one. <laughs> um, yeah, I that is one of those Third Rock. I Dagwood's first appearance on Sequest. Well, that's. That's a Peter DeLuise thing. Yes. So thank you, I, Gregory One. I. But one I, of my favorite I, shows and one of the episodes you guys were all in one episode together in season two. Yes. That Tony my dad Piccolo. Was, um, the, the Dagwood character yes. was supposed to be made up of all these different ethnicity, everything. And Peter had all this, the spray paint. And, you know, I mean, like he had a bunch of different, like he was that character. Yeah. And then they brought in a bunch of Dagwoods that they they didn't want to take the time to like paint everybody and do all that. Yeah. So Peter was like the original Dagwood that was a dagger. A yeah. yeah. And then and then the other ones were there Options wasn't of like, him. He was the up. prototype. He was the prototype. I'm exactly. not a freak. I'm a prototype. I think he was very much like he I I guess I could ask him, but but it was very kind of Frankenstein. You know? Yeah, and he he the last time he was on the show he he talked about modeling some of his mannerisms off of I think a maybe it was your kid I'm not entirely sure but he said he had there was a there was a baby in the family that was Just always that. going mm-hmm, yeah you know, and uh, is this your kid yeah because okay. I was twenty I was twenty one when I had. Her name is Riley DeStefano DeLuise. She goes by her middle name now, DeStefano, which is my grandmother's maiden name. And so at the time, Riley was one and a half okay. or so. And so he would he would imitate her. <laughs> he, 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 I think the idea is Dagwood was was new to this world, yeah. was 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 a baby in that yeah. sense, you know. Yeah, he was a new form of life. Gelf, a uh, genetically engineered life form. So yes, all right. Um, yeah, uh, first appearance of of sequel that show. I oh, man, it, it kills me that it didn't it didn't go on further. That show had such potential. Well, they also so. they brought they got rid of Jaws, Roy Scheider, and they brought in yes, uh, Michael Ironside. And didn't Michael Ironside, didn't he come on to uh, uh, Stargate too? Yes, he, or did, he did an episode in in uh, uh, season nine called Crusade. He played a character called Sevis. So, and David, they killed the him in the same episode. That, but the fact that you know that, like off the top of your head, very impressive. <laughs> very you. impressive. 
Who, yeah. who needs Google when we have David? Well, that's the thing. I mean, I can be wrong. So just watch a recent trivia episode with me and Darren. Darren kicked my ass. So oh, that's so funny. But but that show yeah. was very interesting. And then my brother Michael had yeah. gills and could breathe he underwater. Had gills, yeah, on his sides for sure. Yeah. I loved that character as well. Stephen Beers produced 21 Jump Street. Oh. Produced that, I believe. Okay. And produces uh, um, the, the show that I just did, Us. This uh, is Us. This is Us. And he wow. came to the set to say hello to me. Now, I only had wow. a small part, but everybody was like, what's Steven doing here? Steven, Steven, you know, he's like the head dude. Yeah. Set, and he wanted to see me. Oh, see, there like, you go. I was like, Steven, sit down. All right, I'm busy acting. I'll be over there in a moment. <laughs> but that was, yeah, that was a, a fun, a fun time. My um, friend, it is it is always terrific to to have you on, and I have uh, the contact information for Amanda, so I will uh, I will get in touch with you. Good. Also, David, um, yeah. I'm sorry. I just want to jump in and let you know that Jeremy, uh, our Jeremy, the mod, yeah. had the answer at the same time as Amanda, and I totally okay. missed it. Oh, so no, Jeremy no. Heiner, our, our moderator. <laughs> yeah. This, I, I, oh, oh, so do a video for Jeremy, no, too? No, I mean, you can just give him a shout out on the yeah, show. I know he'll love he's, it. He's he does a team. great job. Just. <laughs> I'm going to say this. I have a hard time saying Jeremy, right? Is that how you say it? Jeremy? Jeremy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so listen, Jeremy, um, what's, tell me what's his favorite thing. What does he like to do? Uh, Jeremy, put it in the chat and in, in our private chat here. Um, you know, I, I'm going to make him a video for himself. Tell, tell me a little something that you do okay. and what's happening. So tell us about uh, Cameo. So you're at, is it Cameo.com? Yeah, if you go to my Instagram, which okay. is David Deloise, you you can uh, get a video, and I'll, I I really do I do spells, I do singing, um, but all you have to do if it's for you, then you know tell me something about you, and I'll give you a video. If it's for a friend, it's a birthday or something, or uh, if you want you know to hate on Pete Shanahan, you can. If you want to you know a spell from Jerry Russo, I'm there. So it's all really right. fun, and and I. I really do. It's silly, but I really do enjoy, you know, kind of interacting with the fans that way. It's it's fun. Yeah, so. yeah this is cool. Two thousand followers on Cameo, one hundred and thirty reviews, five point oh. Subscribe to my VIP fan club and get personal rare photos and DMs. This is really cool, man. This is really great. I've, I've a seen a lot of people, people use it on there too. Oh, absolutely. Well, of course, for sure. But it's it's nice that you get a kaleidoscope of of all these amazing folks, and I'm glad, I'm glad we're show we're displaying this uh, on the website right now or on the channel right now. I'm I'm glad uh, you're on there, and we'll we'll hopefully get some push in that direction. But uh, yeah, this is it's. Uh, and you know what I typically do on there too is I I put on free DMs. So if anybody wants yeah. to ask a specific question or something like that, you know, which is which is cool. Okay. Um, uh, it's always so fun to to talk to you guys. It's always great to have you on, man. It's uh, uh, truly, it's um, uh, I I appreciate you taking the time, and um, it's uh, it's it's always terrific to to have you back. And did did she ever respond? Uh, she didn't. But I'll tell you this: Tony is you've put Tony to sleep. Ah, well, that's how we like it. Um, Cuddle yeah, dog. It's, it's all good. It's late there. Yeah. She just said, I love you. And she didn't respond. So um, I will do this. When she responds, yeah. I will tell you and then you can. Okay. <laughs> we'll add it. Yeah. Jeremy said he was a big fan of, of Pete, even though he still shipped for O'Neill and Carter. You know, wow. that's why a lot of people were in that camp. It's like, you know what? I, I can appreciate both. And hey. that's. I'm as David Deloise, I'm in that camp too. I want them to be together, but you know, I, I'm technically, I'm not Pete Shanahan. I'm David <laughs> Deloise. So, but I, I, I wanted them to be together too. Yeah. 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 There's that, that. It was magic to, you know, just watching that, that performance and that, um, that uh, charisma take place on, on the screen because the, the sparkle, the, the, uh, the sparks are beneath the surface. And that's why we watch, you know, we watch for, 
for uh, characters who are entertaining and you know reflect a piece of ourselves and go in places that we can only dream of i like can you tm that was good tm david it's always a pleasure having you on brother and i'm so great to see you thank you happy that everything's going so good for you i appreciate it and uh uh, uh, till next time till next time absolutely my friend you take care of yourself all right all right you too we'll talk soon be well Bye. David DeLuise, Pete Shanahan on Stargate SG-1. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in to our live show and submitting your questions. Jeremy said, if you could write an episode of Stargate or any of the shows, what would it be about? I created a treatment for what happened with the ancient plague. And I pitched it to Fandemonium along with uh, Diana Drew Botsford, who had also written a couple of episodes, or a couple of episodes, a couple of uh, novels, Four Dragons and The Drift. And she had actually, in another treatment, had actually put a little bit of this concept into one of her future books. She had alluded to some of it. Um, I I have a treatment that is about 10 years old that that explains... Uh, uh, what the plague was and explains um, how much do I want to give away? Explains the downfall of the four great races. Explains why they broke up. Um, let me say that when when you are uh, for it intelligent species and you've 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 gone from one end of the cosmos to the other you've you've existed for um millennia what what do you do um when there is nothing left to say and nothing new to discover they do something and it destroys them and it leads to uh the knocks that we know it it explains why we never see the furlings. Although in this treatment, they've been around all along and we never knew it. You find out who they are or what is left of them that is who that they are. Um, and uh, yeah, it kind of, it kind of, it explains why Ayana is left behind at the beginning of Atlantis. She was a key to that. And um, that's all I'll say about that. And I'm hoping one day to to release it, you know, in in some form. But it explains why the Asgard cannot breed. It explains why we can't find the furlings. It explains why the Nox look human and not completely tree-like, why they have human faces. Uh, and it explains why the, the Dakar device was necessary. And it also explains what Anubis was doing with a Stargate destroyer in um, in Redemption One and Two. I will say that it's not; it wasn't meant to destroy Stargates. It was meant to access an ascended plane. That's all I'll say. So um, I would I would love to release that story at some point because it explains uh, a great deal of backstory. But the whole point of this is, you know, like a lot of people say, well, I would love to watch a a, um, a store a, a new series based on the ancients. You can't, and the executives would never create a show that just fills backstory. You have to create a show or create an episode or a piece of content that moves the story forward. And uh, this did that as well as uh, going backwards. Uh, so I think I think it was really the best of both worlds, and it's 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 just one of those things that I'll keep I'll keep close to my chest and you know hang on to, and you know maybe at some point in the future I'll get a um I'll get I'll get I'll get a way to pitch it, but I need a a writer's agent first. So there's that. I appreciate you asking the question, Jeremy. Uh, we have T-shirts and cups and all kinds of other items. And if you want to support the show further, go and check out our themed swag. Stargate's uh, themed, dialthegate.com slash merch. You can click on a specific design to see what items are being offered. Checkout is fast and easy. 
You can use your credit card or PayPal. Just visit dialthegate.com slash merch. And thank you so much for your support. Thanks again to David DeLuise for coming on. He is uh, a friend. He is a treat to always have. Thanks to my moderator, uh, Summer, Tracy, uh, Keith, Jeremy Reese, and Anthony. You guys are the best. My producer, Linda Gategabber Fury. Thanks to Frederick Marcoux at Concepts Web, uh, web developer at Dial the Gate, and to Jeremy Heiner, our webmaster who keeps the site going. My name is David Reed. I appreciate you tuning in. Next week, we are going to have a pre recorded episode with Catherine Powers, uh, so executive story consultant for season one of SG1. She also created the Tolan and uh, the. Uh, like the idea behind the Asgard, but this is more about an episode. Uh, this is this episode is really an interview of, and it's an overview of her life and her career. It's it's only so much of it is about Stargate. You get to know her and the interesting person that she is in this episode, and that's on the seventh of May at twelve p.m. Pacific time. That's a pre-recorded episode that will air right here on Dial the Gate. Also on the fourteenth of may at 12 noon pacific time stargate science with mika mckinnon and uh, david hewlett that's going to be a fun one mika was the science consultant on on S on atlantis and universe and so david and i are going to sit down and get an education and we're all going to ask your questions and uh and open up our brains a little bit to see uh what's missing and see what we can fill it with this is going to be a good time I appreciate you tuning in to Dial the Gate. Thanks again to David uh, DeLuise. My name is David Reed. See you on the other side.